Howdy friends, it's me, Pink Poodle. I'm not a pink poodle, that's just the name of my <laughs> my crafty business, I guess. Um, so, basically, what I'm going to do today is not pocket, pocket, yeah, pocket letter related. I can't say that. Um, I'm actually going to make a wood, like a block, and I'm going to put pictures on it, and... You could do anything with these. These are pretty cool. Um, one fun thing to do with them is to, you could put your kids' photos on them, which is cool. You can make one for each of your kids and on one side put the letter of their initial for their name and then put their picture on all the other sides. There's six sides. Um, so like I said, you could do five pictures and then put one with their initial. And so if you have a couple of kids, it would be cute to like stack them up um, or to do this for your grandkids or what have you. It's a really cute thing. But instead of using pictures, because I didn't really have any pictures lying around of any anything, I could have done pictures of my dog, I guess. But so I'm going to use this example, but I'm just going to use uh, pictures that I printed. Just random. They're a little like um, peacocks and stuff. I like peacocks and I haven't done anything with these pictures, these graphics yet. So I figured I'd do that. So um, starting off, the first thing you want to do is take your block and you want to sand it all the sides. Um, you want to start, what I usually do is I have like those sanding blocks. They're like foam sanding blocks. Um, and I started with a really high grit. Um, and then I went to a medium. And then I went to a like a light grit to kind of finish it off. And so they're fairly smooth. They just need to be smooth enough so that, because we're going to glue paper to it. So I just want it to be smooth enough so that the paper doesn't buckle or anything too much and kind of look stupid. So after you do this, you know, well first you might want to, obviously if you're going to use graphics or even your kids pictures, you're going to want to print them out on just copy paper. You want to do it on a thin paper. You don't want to do it on cardstock or photo paper. You want to do it on a thin paper. And if, you know, if you have an inkjet printer like most people do, um, what you're going to want to do, a little trick that I that I know um, that I figured out uh, about copy paper or any paper that when you print on your inkjet printer, and if you were to decoupage right over it, do you ever notice how it smears? Well, to prevent it from smearing, just do a light coat of this over the entire sheet of paper that you just, you know, all your graphics. Do it while they're, you know, still on the paper so you don't have to do like tiny little pieces. I'll do it over my garbage can real quick, quick but, you, you know, you should take it outside and just do that and just go over it. But I'm just going to throw it in my garbage can and kind of put a layer over the pictures really quick because I don't have time to go outside and you'll see you can see it's kind of wet in spots so I'll just take my heat gun and dry it real quick Okay, so it'll dry the rest of the way. I'll sit it over there and it'll dry the rest of the way while I'm painting um, the block. So if you do that um, with the clear acrylic, you can use matte or gloss or whatever you can find. Um, it's not expensive. You can use any kind of clear gloss in a spray works best because obviously you can't smear it if it's in a spray. Um, I've got my paintbrushes over here ready. Just need to dry them off. Um, and since I'm doing like a peacock kind of uh, graphics, I'm going to paint my block um, with this peacock type blue. It's called Laguna, but I call it peacock blue because it's almost like the same color as in some of those pictures of the peacocks. Um, I'm going to paint the whole block. Um, and I may or may not distress the edges after it dries. And what I usually do is take these things. These are from like the packages that you get and you have like this piece of plastic left. I use these to put my paint on while I'm painting so I don't make a mess. I use it as like a little palette kind of. 
and you're probably probably going to have to do two to three coats of this uh, uh, any kind of acrylic paint that you use on these blocks because it, you know it is unfinished wood and usually it takes a few coats for it to unless you're going for that look where the wood kind of shows through it's kind of up to you obviously you could also um, do a crackle um, and do like this color let's say you put this as your base and then you put the crackle medium over it let it dry and then um, I should have held that differently huh. and then you'd put like let's say an antique white over top of it and then the blue will crackle through and that would look really pretty too but because I am not um, because I'm not um, because I'm going to be covering each side a majority of it um, you're only going to see the edges really um, because the graphics are going to cover each side I'm not going to worry about crackling it if I was just going to put a little something on it where it wasn't you know where it would show more then I'd waste my time you know but I'm not going to waste my time crackling it just for the edges to show it's kind of going to be a waste um so I'm going to finish painting this and then I'll come back when that's all done and dry. Okay, so I'm all painted. Got two coats of paint on this sucker. I got my images um, cut out. Um, they're not all exactly the same size, um, but it's really fine. I mean... I never get too completely anal with things, but, you know, you don't have to, I mean, if you want them to be completely the exact same t size, you can do that. I just kind of cut it and eyeballed everything, so it's fine by me. I'm not super picky, because it'll look pretty regardless. You can't, you're not going to be able to tell. Anyway, Mod Podge. Um, also, I make my own Mod Podge. I just keep refilling this with two parts Elmer's glue, the white glue or PVA glue, whatever, two parts of that and one part water makes Mod Podge. Makes a great Mod Podge, works fantastic. It's a matte finish, regular old Mod Podge. Um, let's see, let me get a brush out and clean it. And what I'm going to do is now we're gonna Mod Podge our photos, our graphics which were sprayed with the acrylic sealant so that they will not run. Um, the ink will not run from the Mod Podge. So what we're gonna do is just start putting a layer of glue and then we have a little bit of play time to be able to adjust our pictures on here how we want them. And then once we get them where we want them, we're gonna go back over them with another layer of Mod Podge. Decoupaging was one of the first crafts I ever did, and it's one of my favorite. I love decoupaging. This one here I'm doing kind of a plain background. It doesn't have like a peacock on it, but it has like a peacock feather background. And then I'm going to put this feather that I kind of fussy cut it out. Um, it's like a peacock feather. I'm just like throwing it on there. Like I said, I'm not doing a lot of thinking on this. It's just kind of to play around and they kind of just give you an example of what you can do with this because like I said you could put your kids photos on here which is like super cute idea and pet photos you can make this for your friends at work you know like if you wanted to give them a Christmas gift I mean what better way than to you know make them a little Christmas thing they could sit on their desk at work and you know so the possibilities are endless there's so many gifts birthday gifts Mother's Day Father's Day um, also if you get any wrinkles in your page you could just take your finger and push them down just check them every now and again because I don't know if you could see that I'm getting a couple little wrinkles under here so as the glue's drying you're gonna want to like take your fingers and kind of rub it around wherever you're getting the problem and then smooth the glue back out because it happens what can I say let me get myself another baby wipe because my hands are getting sticky 
I don't know what happened to my baby wipes. What did I do with them? I thought I had them out. Well, pooey. Hmm. Well, that's bizarre. They were sitting right here. I don't know what I did with them. But well, I guess I'm not going to have a baby wipe. I don't understand. They were sitting literally right there two seconds ago. I'm losing it, people. Okay. Get back to this anyway. And you want to be careful because you don't want to set it down while the glue is wet. So just do the ones you can do. I'm not putting these in any particular order or anything. I'm just kind of... I think a trick to making it so that the thing doesn't buckle is to kind of take off any excess glue so you're not like slopping it on there. So, because the less glue, you know, you want a layer of glue, glue across it, but the less glue that you have underneath of it will make it not buckle as much. At least that's kind of, or maybe not because it's buckling again. Dang it, forget that, scratch that. <sighs> that makes no difference because I just, <laughs> I lied to you. <laughs> oh my god. I thought maybe that was why, because I thought I heard somebody else say that a long time ago. Usually I use my fingers to make sure it's really down, because I don't really have a brayer I can use for that. So, I make sure this is not buckling over here. And plus the glue sometimes seeps over the edge, so you want to make sure you catch it so it's not glopping. Alright, so I got like these three sides done. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna give them a quick dry with my heat gun. So bear with me. Shouldn't take long. Another thing is while you're heating it with the heat gun, check and make sure you keep pushing down on any of the little um, lumps or bumps that you have. Cause we're gonna go over this with a shiny coat, so, or at least I am. You could do whatever you want on yours. And so, it's not going to show your fingerprints. Okay, yeah, they're dry enough to the touch where I can now do the other sides. I'm gonna try something else to try to not, see if I can find a way to get the paper not to buckle. Let's see if I can figure this out. All right, let's see. What if I spread it out with my fingers before I put the layer of glue on top of it and make sure, or even take, like I use old credit cards and just kind of do this and see if we can get it so that it doesn't, let's see if it doesn't, um, what do you call it? Buckle or get air bubbles or whatever you want to call it. And then of course, because I was doing this side and going like over the edge like that, sometimes you'll get a little bit of glue just on the other edges. Just make sure you smooth it out. That's fine as long as you smooth it out. Okay, I'm going to dry this real quick because I'm getting glue on the other edges. I don't want to lay it down and then screw it up.
Okay, yeah, that's the trick. I knew there was something, a way to do it where you didn't get bubbles, and that was by using a credit card. I couldn't remember whether whether it was um, using the thin layer of paint, and then I used to use a brayer, and so I don't have my brayer because it's all dirty and nasty, so I haven't been using it for decoupaging, but that's what I would do. But see, I kept putting the glue directly over it. You got to smooth it down first. I don't know. I forget how I do things sometimes. So let's see. If I'm doing... That's the up way. Okay. So now, which one do I want? I guess that one. Do, 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 do. Hold on. Okay, anywho. I'm going to have to invest in a better camera instead of using my phone. <laughs> Unfortunately, it only lets me record for 10 minutes at a time. I've mentioned that in other videos. And because of that... I have to have a timer to remind me when 10 minutes is up so that I stop it and restart it so it'll give me another 10 minutes and not cut off. Because I like to have it in as high as quality as I can get it so that you could see detail because nothing I hate more than like watching a video and the detail so bad that you really can't see what, you know, the, what they're doing and what they're trying to show you. So I like to be able to see the details. Anyway, just going along, putting on the images. Now I'm going to go for the last one. And how did I put that one? That one's like that, so I'll do this one. Just whatever. It can be any which way you want, really. But as you notice, none of my images are running. None of the ink is running. It's all staying perfectly in place. And that's because of the, um, the clear coat that I just very lightly, quickly put a coat of. I mean, I didn't fuss with it. I just did a very quick kind of coat of that. Let me dry this. slightly tacky got a piece of paper stuck on here somehow okay so now what I'm going to do is get out my I'm gonna rinse this off 
rinse off my brush, close up the matte Mod Podge, and I have the um, the let's see where is it? I have like the really super glossy hard coat stuff. Is this it? Yeah, hard coat. Hard coat. It's um, I guess it's the uh, is it glossy though? I don't even know. Um, sorry, I'm trying to figure out whether this is glossy because I want it to be glossy and I'm not sure it is. Hmm. Well, I think I'm going to just use the glossy Mod Podge then. Screw it. If I can find my glossy Mod Podge. There it is. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to use the glossy because I have no idea. I bought that and I assumed it was glossy, but I have a feeling it might not be. It's just a hard coat, I think. But it's not specifically glossy. And I kind of want a glossy finish on this. I want it to be glossy. I don't know why I have a rubber band on top of there. Oh, I hate when that happens, when you can't get your Mod Podge open, because it's like glued shut. <laughs> it drives me nuts. I can usually heat it and get it open, or just take scissors and kind of do that and crack it away from the... That's what I usually do. Crack it away so it kind of lifts the glue. I think I need to clean the lip of my bottle. There we go. See, that usually works. Yeah, I probably do need to clean the lip of my bottle pretty well. This might need to be mixed. Let me get some paper towels and mix it. Usually the gloss sometimes needs needs a little bit of a mix before you use it. Okay. Now, this I'll just put a couple of coats of the Glossy Mod Podgy. I was thinking about putting like a, um, a trim or something on it, but I think I'm just going to leave it like this. I thought about it, but eh. I was going to put something on else on it to dress it up but I think I like it just like this you could do whatever you want though I mean keep in mind you can dress this up however you want you can add like a trim around the edges or you can add rhinestones or you know any kind of bling you want you can add the glitter mod podge to it to give it a kind of a glitter look which I love the Glitter Mod Podge. You can make your own Glitter Mod Podge too by making the regular Mod Podge, like I told you, two parts glue, uh, white glue, one part water, or, um, um, and, not or, <laughs> my mind is like drifting, um, and then just add a fine glitter. You don't want to overdo it with the glitter. You want to be careful not to make it so glittery that you can't see the picture underneath or the graphic it's just to give it a light glitter so that you know um and i've made it before and the glitter that they use when the actual the company mod podge has theirs is um kind of on the thicker side it's not super fine and i found that when i made mine with the fine glitter it looked better it gave it a really cool kind of shimmer. All right, I'll be right back and I'll show you the finished product. I'm going to put one or two coats of the clear coat on and then I'm going to come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, so we're all done and this is what it looks like. I think it came out really cool. It's got all the different peacock graphics on it and it's got a nice coating and I think it looks awesome and this would be a cool thing to like have on a shelf or 
you know, you can make a few of them to kind of coordinate and then stack them. And yeah, they're really cool. And you can do anything with them. Like I said, photos, graphics, you know, anything you can think of. And they're kind of just really fun to, they're fun to make. So I hope you enjoyed this. And I hope you try it. And if you do, please um, put a picture in the comments or somehow send me a picture. I'd love to see what you do. And um, you can also make children's blocks with these as well. Um, you know, building blocks. You could put different photos on them of themselves or, you know, whatever. And, or different animals to teach them animals. You know, any animals that start with an A, you could put a letter A and put animals. You know, you could do all kinds of things with them. So uh, be creative, and um, I hope you all have a good week. Make sure you do what you love and love what you do. And until next time, see ya.